So we're doing, uh, welcome, welcome. We're, we are in episode three of season one of The Chosen. We're just kind of going through, like, like you watch it on your own, or we're, we're showing it here just for fun, but we're not like talking about The Chosen, kind of we are, but we're going from the theme of The Chosen. Episode three was uh, like a, about a half hour. It's a pretty, pretty short episode. And, and it was just a bunch of scenes of Jesus like hanging out with kids, you know, just doing different things with children. And, and it'd be tempting to look at that scene and, and kind of finish it up and go like, well, I mean, there's so many cool stories you could do in the Gospels, right? I mean, healing leopards and, and sermons and, and, you know, we saw the fish. Well, we'll see that. We haven't seen it here yet. I mean, there's so many exciting stories in the Gospels. You'd be tempting to go like, why spend an entire episode just with Jesus, like, hanging out, making toys, and hang, talking to kids, and teaching them how to, you know, I mean, it, it just seems like kind of a, a waste of time, but, it, but it's not. <laughs> it actually is showing uh, the, the heart of God for, for, for kids, for, for, for children. Uh, scripture tells us that, that, that God has a high view of children. Just, just listen to some of these verses. Psalm 78, uh, 4, we will not hide them. Talk about the, the, you know, the, the accomplishments of God, the precepts of God. We'll not hide them from their children, but we'll tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his might, and the wondrous works he's performed. Like, like we just want to tell the kids of all the things God has done, and because he's been doing this for generations, and and you're going to be part of this. You're, 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 in, you're a child in this world, and, and just we have this great God. That's Psalm 78. Uh, Psalm 127.3, sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord. Offspring, a, a reward. Children are a blessing uh, from, from God. Matthew 18, uh, whoever humbles himself like this child, this one uh, is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Talking to adults, you need to be more like kids, right? Uh, and whoever welcomes one child like this in my name welcomes me, Jesus says. Uh, Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Anybody here think all creation does not include children? Of course, that, that includes children too. They're part of, of creation. He, uh, he didn't put an asterisk there. Well, I mean, not the kids because, you know, they're busy, you know. No, everybody. John, uh, later on, uh, writes in Second John 4, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth. Uh, the next book, Third John, same verse, 4, he says, I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. So he's writing to the church going, I'm thinking of the church, and I'm just so excited about what you got going on with the kids. The kids are coming to know Jesus, and they're, they're getting to know him, and they're following him. They're walking in, in the truth. There is a, a prayer that uh, uh, people who were raised in the Jewish faith would pray every single day, every morning and, and every night. It's called the Shema, and it was a, a portion of three different scriptures in the Old Testament. And the first part of this prayer that they prayed every morning and every night, and this goes back to ancient times, like long before Jesus, right? Going back to Deuteronomy, times of Moses, right? Um, they would pray this prayer. The first part, and what they would do is, is, at least in later times, they still do this today. They'll, they'll cover their eyes when, when, they're, when they're saying this, or in, in the scripture here, uh, and I got a picture, um, like modern day, I might just put a book. I mean, that's like, they, they, still, they still do this. But the prayer is, it's a familiar prayer, be, because obviously we've heard it a lot, because it's, it's such a big thing it's Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. These words that I'm giving you today, these instructions, right? These words I'm giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit down in your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Let them be a symbol on your forehead, write them on the doorposts of, of your house and your, in your city gates. This is a, a declaration of faith that we, we, we believe that God is the Lord. He's not like a random God. Other. He is God of the universe and that he is one God. He, the Lord is one. Uh, this is what made some of the early Christian leaders so angry with Jesus to come in and say he's the son of God. They're going, no, no, no God is one, you, not two. It's not father and son. They didn't understand uh, the whole Trinity concept. Um, so that was new to them. That, that, that's 
partly what drove him to the cross. What, what was, there's no way you can't be the son of God. There's only one as part of this prayer. It was a misunderstanding, obviously, but, but um, it was driven into them. The prayer uh, was to remind them every day, every morning, every night, uh, to, to, to love this God with all my soul, my heart, with my strength, and everything about me is, is about loving our, our, our God. It was a challenge to make it more than head information, like, oh yeah, I can recite the verse, but he said the, the, to put it in your heart, to let, let it move into your heart so it's a, it's a, it's a rela- I have a relationship with God. Even way back in Deuteronomy, God was looking for relationship, not just following a set of rules, but, but I want you to serve me with your heart. I want you to, I want you to love me with everything that you are, and, and let's have a relationship together. And it was a reminder in this prayer every day, morning and night, that this was not just something you recited. It was a a reminder, this is a legacy that you are handing down to your children. Teach this to your children. Always be prepared for opportunities to just point out God. When you wake up, when you're, like, you're walking along, you know, whatever it is you're, you're doing, you sit down, you're, 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 whatever it is the scripture says here. Talk about it wherever you go, whenever you go, whatever you see throughout the day. And, and, and they still do this. this was, they actually did this. They put it on your forehead, and on, on your wrist. That's what these little boxes are. They, that was, you can still see, well, obviously this is today. <laughs> That's not a, a first century picture. Uh, they put these little boxes with this scripture in it on his, on his arm and his elbow there. And it's wrapped up, uh, bound on his arm and on his forehead. That was a continual reminder all throughout the day. So you prayed it in the morning, you prayed it at night, and you'd walk around. There's people with these things. The horn sticking out of the head. There was a scripture to remind them, the Lord our God is one. Love him with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength, all your mind. It, 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 was, it was a key to, to, to their lives. Jesus says in his ministry, looking back at when this started in Moses, and it's still going on to that day, he was talking to, to people, and, and he said, you know, someone asked them, what's the most important commandment in all of scripture? He says, that that right there. In, in Mark 12, one of the scribes approached when he heard them debating, saw that Jesus answered them well. He asked them, which commands the most important of all? Verse 29, Jesus answered the most important. He's listen, Israel. He was reciting the Shema. Listen, Israel. Or hear, O Lord, right? Uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. So if this is, by Jesus' admission, the greatest commandment that there is, I mean, there is nothing greater. And like, this is what everything boils down to. And part of this commandment was to pass this on to your children. Okay, so children's part of this. It should be no surprise that Jesus would spend a significant amount of time in his ministry with children. We just don't think of him that way. We put him through our own filter. I think well, he always hung out with adults. Well, adults had their children, you know? And so children would gather and they would be part of these events when all the crowds would come and the healings were happening and the teaching was happening. People brought their kids. We find that in scripture too, Mark 10. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. But the disciples, they just, 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 just touch my child. Just, just put your hand on his head and say a little prayer. You know, that's all they're asking. Um, but the disciples they didn't like that. The disciples rebuked them, and Jesus saw he was indignant, not at the kids, but at the disciples. And he said to them, "Let the little children come to me. Don't stop them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it." After taking them in his arms, he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Now, now, now think about this. This wasn't him running through the crowd high five and all the kids. Hey, hey, glad to see you. you know, and I got I to go in to preach. You know, got to go heal a leper. Hey. He, he stopped and he held them one by one. It wasn't a group hug. And he spoke to them and he blessed them. He prayed for them. This was not like a, a quick little two-minute thing before the main gig. This was the main gig, part of it. The adults were there. The, all, all this stuff we read about happened, but this happened too. We always just kind of shove that aside. Ah, I didn't have time. He, had all, he made time for the children. It, it was part of the ministry that was going on. He, one by one, that, so that wasn't like a five. I mean, it was, no wonder he was so exhausted. He was serving and teaching and loving and, and Blessing and praying and all day long, healing and doing all these things he was doing all day long. Uh, Matthew 19, another example, the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray. 
But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, leave the little children alone. Do not try to keep them from coming to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After placing his hands on them, he went on from there. Luke 18, people were bringing infants to him so that he might touch them. But the disciples saw it. They rebuked them. Jesus, however, invited them, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them because the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, Kevin, kingdom of God belong to such as these. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Now, now some of these could be uh, the same experience told from different angles, the different uh, uh, gospels, but it would be a mistake to think that only happened once. This would have been normal. This was part of the ministry. This was a day, every time there was a gather, gathering of people, people had, had their kids. I mean, you think about it, we're all like that as parents. We want what's best for our kids, right? Um, I, I mean, whatever we can do to help our kids, we're, we're going to do it. When, when our kids were, were younger, uh, in high school, uh, we took Danielle to the, the best vocal teacher we could find. Um, uh, it took time, it took money, it took driving, I mean, it was a weekly thing. Uh, uh, and, and she was uh, talented, and, and so she got up to a, like a higher level person that you had to have by invitation only type of thing. We couldn't just look her up in the phone book and, and, and find her. Uh, our, our younger daughter, Shannon, when she started playing bass clarinet, and they were seeing prom, on her, uh, we we um, found uh, the best clarinet, uh, bass clarinet teacher in the in, in the state, and, and um, again, that was an invitational only type of thing. The teachers were like, sure, "She's got something going on." I mean, she was all state four years in a row, so it was pretty impressive, um, especially for a bass clarinet type of setting. But uh, it, we invested a ton into her to, to bless her, so to be to bless her. Um, you can find her bass clarinet right now if you go to the Des Moines Symphony today. Um, her instructor plays in the symphony, and she was so impressed with the bass clarinet, she bought her bass clarinet. So if we got all the money back, which was kind of cool. Um, but it was an investment. It was like, I drove lesser, I drove my cars longer when my kids were in school so that that money would go toward things to bless them. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to say, uh, uh, we wanted to bless our kids. It turned out it did. It helped them with scholarships and all this stuff, open doors, and, and, and it's been a good thing. But, but uh, that's how far parents will go. You will make sacrifices. You will spend money you don't have. You, I mean, you'll figure things out. And that's, that's what parents will often do, do naturally. So think about it. If someone comes to town, and you're in the first century Middle East, and this guy can heal lepers and raise the dead and cause the blind to see and teach with an authority that even the scribes and Pharisees were like shocked over, and you have an opportunity to see him. Uh, Yes, you want to go hear him, but you also want this man of God to to touch your child and pray for him. This was normal, that this happened all the time. It wasn't just like, oh, that one time. Remember that one time when they brought the kids? Oh, that was crazy. No, no. this was like part of what happened in the ministry of Jesus over and over again. So the issue is, uh, Jesus isn't walking the streets these days. I, I mean, he, he, he's, you know the story, right? He, he went to the cross, and he died, and he was crucified, and he went out on to heaven. So, he, so he's, he's not running around blessing people like he was. However, we are blessed to live in a society where if you go really to any neighborhood in America, you will hopefully find, you'll be really close, probably walking distance to a church that is teaching the blessings of Jesus to that neighborhood. Uh, they might be a little different flavor than us or do things, you know, I mean, we'll have different varieties, but, but, but there are churches there representing Jesus Christ, and children are being blessed because of it. Uh, my life completely changed, like in the fourth grade. I, I, I mean, I was just a squirrely kid. I, well, I was more than a squirrely kid. I was a going to be a kingpin of crime at some point. I had already, by that point, organized, you know, a stealing club where we would go into stores every day and shoplift and, and you know, I've told you all the stories. Uh, you all haven't heard them, but, you know, I, I was had language that kept other parents, they kept their children away from me. I mean, they didn't want anybody near this guy. I, I was poison, right? And, and so, so I wasn't like sweet little boy, right? Sunday school boy. That was not me. But there was a little church a block away from our house, and something drew me to that church. Uh, there were oftentimes no one in my family went to church, but I would walk that block and, and, and go to church. And, and something, it, was, it took a few years, but there's this Sunday school teacher that was in, I don't remember, the, you know, third grade, 
second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. She kept being moved up, and I kept hearing from her. I heard it from mom, too, but I kept hearing it from this. There was a, like this, uh, you, you have this uh, authenticity. Is coming, what am I trying to say? It, it was uh, confirmed by a third person. You know, like, it wasn't, well, mom says it. it should be true. Well, here's a person who doesn't even know my mom, and she's saying the same story about Jesus. And, and anyway, I, I, it was this blessing of Jesus of how he can change your life, and you follow him and live his ways. That was a great blessing. And it was around the fourth grade when it finally struck me, and I thought, yes, yes, I want that. And my life radically changed at time, that time. It, 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 changed me. I mean, I immediately, you know, dis, dis, disassembled the, the stealing club. I immediately started changing my language and started to change the way I thought. It started to change my goals in, in life, and, and, and it, it, it changed me radically. It got to the point where after all these years now of, of building on this a blessing that people were adding into my life that by the time I got into junior high and the high school when all my friends were, were experimenting with the world, you know, doing all the stuff that's out there and trying to, hey, is this good to drink? Is that good to taste? Is that good to, you know, I just wasn't interested. I just didn't even care because at that point, I was just, I just, wanted, I just love God. I mean, it's kind of, maybe that's kind of weird, but, but, but it's like it came because someone taught me about Jesus, and my, my life has been blessed amazingly because I've chosen to follow him. Have I been perfect? No. Have I made mistakes? Absolutely, we all have. What I'm saying is my direction in life changed from going that way uh, to going that way and following God, and, and it, it, it has blessed my life in incredibly. Uh, you can say the same thing, many of you. Uh, if you can go back to your youth and you learned about Jesus, maybe at home, maybe in Sunday school, maybe, you know, but, and you can see how that blessed your life, how that, how that um, altered life decisions, how, how it gave you direction, how it gave you peace in storms and, and strength. And, and I mean, it, it's just, it changed your life. I've seen it in so many. Uh, I, I got married when I was 21. Uh, Cheryl was 19. I mean, I look at that now, I think, man, we were kids. But we, you know, I was in Bible college and she was ready to move on and become an adult and do everything. We're like, well, let's get married. But she had the blessing of also being raised in a setting where she'd learned about Jesus and, and, and wanted to live his way and to please him. And, and, and uh, we got married and, and that's been 36 years now. It's been going strong. I think we you know, I think, I think we're going to make it, uh, you know, but it, only because of Jesus. It's not because we're one. I'm not the best husband in the world. She's not the best wife in the world. We're two imperfect people with pride and, and ego and, and selfishness. And, but, but Jesus has, has, helped us and blessed our marriage. So when the times come that we're ready to clash or we're thinking differently or we're mad at the other person because of whatever, uh, Jesus kind of fixed that. He has blessed our marriage. We are together because of Jesus today. Now, we also raise children in that blessing. And they are so, have been blessed and made good choices by looking for men in their lives. So they're both married to men who also were raised in that type of blessing. So now it is so satisfying for me, now that I've aged a ways and gone down the road a little bit, the, to be like, I'm a grandpa now. There's like another generation involved. And sometimes we'll all be together eating a meal and I'll look around and it's just a satisfaction of saying, look at the Look at this blessing. Look at this blessing. I have children who love Jesus and married people who love Jesus and my wife loves Jesus. And now we have a little grandkid who's running around playing drums at home and, 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 and he, he loves, he doesn't know who Jesus is yet. He's only one, but he just loves life. And I, I think he's being raised in the blessing because a Sunday school teacher, <laughs> a Sunday school teacher uh, just, just loved me. And, and, my mom did too, but, but, but that was the person that really made it click for me um, and changed my life. There's blessing, there's blessing in, in having Jesus um, in, in your life and to, have to pass that, that blessing on. And I know, like I said, so many of you can say the same thing, that, that, that you, you understand blessing, you understand blessing that comes from being, having Jesus in the center of, of your life. I, I believe, this is my, you know, you always try to assess things, right? I look at society 
and, and all the craziness out there and the anger and, and the bitterness and, and the left versus right and this race versus that race and, and inflation, you know, all the different things. We, we have, I mean, whose fault is it? And who's causing all this? And, and yada, 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 and all this stuff. Here's what I think. I think our society is where it is today because churches stopped blessing children with the teachings of Jesus. Uh, we have a couple generations out there who don't even know who Jesus is. Now, now there's a couple situations. One is some families just stopped going to church. Um, you know, some kids have been raised and never been church ever. Uh, so, so they don't even know the blessings of Jesus. Um, so, so there's that. But also, there are churches, and I don't want to start pointing fingers, that's not what I'm doing, but there, there are churches that have stopped even teaching. We, we, we stopped giving the blessings of the teachings of Scripture that we're talking about, and, and they began entertaining instead. You know, youth groups became centers of parties. We're just going to have a party. We're going to have fun, you know, and oh, and here's a little Devo, you know. Well, the Devo is not much when the storms of life come or you're in the backseat of a car and the temptation's there. You're like, hey, well, whatever, hey, pizza. I mean, I mean you know, that, that's not grounding for you, right? Uh, like the grounding I was able, able to have uh, that, that helped me when, when those uh, situations um, came up. Uh, um, so, so churches have failed, and families have failed. There's still churches doing this. We're, we're doing this, blessing children by teaching Scripture, and a lot of them are. I'm not saying they're not, but, but that is two things that I think has affected our, our society. Um, I'll, I'll never forget the day that uh, someone uh, came up to me several years ago, years, a long time ago, uh, and said, you know, we're, we're going to a different church. Uh, we decided to, to not go into Pathway anymore. Uh, because this other church has basketball during Sunday school, and, and my son would rather play basketball. Um, and I thought, well, basketball's fun, and that's great, but I also, it, it grieved my heart. I thought, because that means there's some blessing there he's not going to get. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of hours in the day you can play basketball. Uh, I don't know if Sunday school is, is the time to do it. Um, I, I'm not, not, again, I don't judge in our church, but I'm just saying I immediately knew, looked downstream, and I thought, there's going to be trouble, and there's going to be trouble. Um, there's going to be some blessing this, this poor young boy won't have and grounding he won't have when the times come. And that's kind of how, how it worked. You know, you drift from God, you make choices. I mean, again, none of us have been perfect or anything like that, but it, he's, he lacked, there. he missed out on blessings in his life that he could have had. Uh, had he followed uh, the path more correctly uh, and, and got to know Scripture. Um, and and, and he, uh, I think he's kind of back. I, I don't know where they're at that recently, but I haven't talked to him recently. But, but um, it, it's just, that just, that just greed, greed my soul. I, I don't care if he plays basketball. Play basketball all day long. I mean, there's nothing wrong with basketball. But, but to replace the kingdom talk, Jesus talk with basketball, that, that's a whole different thing. So let, let, me, let me address our, our parents for a moment. Um, some of you, and I'm, I'm, I'm done, right? I'm, I'm done with raising uh, children. Uh, I'm grandpa now, um, and, and so I'm in a different place. But, but a lot of you are in the middle of it, and, and I know how it gets. I, you know, it's it's going to last forever. It's tiring. It's exhausting. It's, it's, it, and I get that. I get all that. Been, 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 been through all that. But let, let me address you as parents for a moment, and, and, and I'm going to say this. Look at church as the greatest blessing your children can receive. Um, in, I spent a lot of money on a bass clarinet. <laughs> the better blessing was church. Uh, I spent a lot of money on voice lessons. Fortunately, that works out when she's here and she gets to sing. Uh, <laughs> we were, we were uh, intentional about all this stuff, too. Uh, but but uh, it, it, the better blessing was the relationship at, at church. There are a, a thousand things a child can do. It, it keeps growing, you know. Uh, a lot of them have moved on to Sundays. Uh, uh, they used to keep Wednesdays open for youth group. A lot of those overlap Wednesdays now. Um, uh, church is no longer is no longer all that uh, a priority in 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 America, um, and that means it has to be for you, because society is not going to bend to you. They're not going to clear the schedule. I'll never forget when we first moved back to Des Moines. We we're getting ready to start a church and everything. Uh, the, on Easter Sunday, there was a huge soccer league going on, and the place was packed with, had to be thousands of people playing soccer on Easter. And it shocked me because we'd spent the last 11 years in a smaller town where we kind of still shut down on Sundays, at least sports, uh, Sunday morning. It, I showed up at 7 o'clock, and the field was full of people already. And, and I was just like, 
whoa, like even Easter, like at least you'd think, well, we'll, we'll cancel for Easter. No, they, they, it, it kept going. All you're doing is denying the blessing to your kids. Um, uh, there's so many, so, so many things, sports, music, academic camps, community activities. I mean, you can go on forever, but none of those things will bless your children like a foundation of Jesus. Because here's what happens. Uh, now that I've lived this life a little bit longer, uh, I realize the youth uh, vanishes quickly. Um, even though it seems like it's taking forever and it's, there's stress and, 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 and chaos and, and you're trying to figure out how to make it all work and it seems like, well, they're only five or whatever age they are. Uh, all of a sudden, one day you open your eyes and it's graduation party day, <laughs> you know, and, and they're done. They, they played their last game, they sung their last song, they held their last concert, and then what? They go on to, to, to work or into college, whatever is their next step. Actually, they've already been making these decisions, decisions in high school. They are now living off the foundation of blessing that has been laid for them. Uh, and it, you can learn great, th- I learned a lot of good stuff in sports growing up, I mean you can. You can learn great things in music, you can learn great things in chess club, you know, I mean debate club, there's all kinds of, but there's nothing like learning the principles of Jesus that will bless your life. And, and, and I'm saying, do all of it, okay, have fun, we did it all but keep something sacred there. Keep that sacred, we will not give up the blessing of Jesus for chess. I don't, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. For soccer, for softball, for basketball, for, for whatever, uh, uh, music, uh, for whatever the, the things that, that are out there. So be very careful in raising your, your, your children. Let the greatest blessing your child receive be, be from, from Jesus. Uh, that doesn't mean they can't miss a Sunday ever, but I'm just saying it's, it's become like a eh type thing uh, for, a lot, for a lot of parents and, and, and rather than and a priority. That's only hurting, it's only hurting the children. Uh, as children or as parents, you have the ability to choose to either bless your children's future or curse their future. And I know that sounds bold, um, uh, but I think it's really true. Every battle that you uh, face on a Sunday morning when your child's like, I don't want to go. And I know, hey, every family goes through this, right? Every parent knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to go to church now. I, you know, I, but they do it for school too, but there's something about church. Every battle you engage in uh, is worth it. You say, oh, guess what? We're going. It, it, I know it's exhausting and it, it wears you out. It's, it's worth it for them. Uh, every battle to get them dressed and out the door is, is by far more valuable than anything else you could do for them. They won't see that yet. You probably won't see that yet because you're not in a good mood driving the church. Um, but, but trust me, by trust me, in 20 years, they will be more than grateful. And they will, they, they will someday say, thank you, man, you were, you were, I can't, can't believe you put up with me. Uh, but man, am I glad. Uh, they, they'll thank you for that. And they will be blessed. Let me also take a moment to address anyone involved in children's ministry. I'm talking nursery through high school. You know, anybody who's a, a child, it's like a whole, a whole ministry and a lot of different things going on. Here's the deal. Uh, teach, serve, teach, disciple like it means something. Please don't make it as a, well, I've got to put in my hour in. You know? Don't make it a, well, I've got to do this again. Uh, I understand time, time, sometimes what it is. I mean, I understand schedules. Create, now it's the holidays, too, on top of everything. And there's going to be times you're going to be like, oh, I'm just tired and I'm exhausted and, and I don't know if I can do another week. Uh, uh, and, and take breaks and all that's okay, good. But, but here, here, here's the thing. You are blessing. I want to say thank you. Okay? I want to thank you for everybody who's ever changed a diaper, who's ever taught a class, who's ever done a youth group, who's ever, I mean, a vacation Bible school. Uh, we're, we're starting a, a junior choir uh, uh, here, uh, Cindy, is, 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 like next month, right? For, on Wednesday nights for like elementary school kids. That's a brand new thing um, that I'm really excited about, I'm really pumped about, because you know what, there's gonna be kids singing about Jesus, um, and, and I, I, that just thrills me. That just makes my heart sing. This whole week, I've been all excited. You know, as we've been kind of texting, texting back and forth about it. Every, thank you, thank you, all of you who have done anything. You are helping bless the next generation. You are uh, the ones who are changing America for the better. You're the one, or the world for the, for the better. Uh, so, so don't 
I just want you to know you are appreciated. You are appreciated, but it's not said enough. We don't celebrate you enough. Um, you're, you're important. Now, I realize that's like everybody does something somewhere, uh, for the most part, uh, at some time, and that's great. It, it, it's, it's us working together as a team to, to help the next generation. You are the reinforcement for uh, a lot of parents to teach them spiritually. My mom did some. If I didn't have that Sunday school to come across uh, alongside her and, and, and help, I don't know if I would have made it. I don't know if I would have. You're, you're that reinforcement for some. For some families, you're the only spiritual instruction they're getting because um, they don't have it at home because parents didn't go, they don't, but they don't know what to teach their kids, uh, and you're it uh, in, in some situations. Uh, so you are so incredibly valuable. And here's the deal. I know... Uh, I'm assuming your lessons will probably include the birth of Jesus this month at some point. You've probably heard that story so many times, you're like, oh, come on. It's like, okay, it's a baby, it's a born, we get it, you know. Uh, it, it, it's easy to let this stuff become just like, eh, because you're doing the elementary level, you know. Uh, let, let me encourage you, when you're teaching these children uh, this, this month, all, anytime, all the time, go into that classroom as if you're one of the shepherds who just saw Jesus a group of angels and told you the salvation has come and you just went into the, the, the nativity scene, you know, and, and, and you saw the baby Jesus and you're in, in overwhelmed with what's going on. Approach the story that way because like, you've heard it a thousand times. It could be those children you're talking to, this could be the first time they've heard it. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, so, so, so teach with passion. Te- te- teach, like you, te- teach like it means something, because it does. You know it does. You benefit from it, but sometimes we forget that, you know, because we're just living it. Uh, so I just want to remind you and encourage you how important what you're doing is. I know you're teaching the basic elementary things, the building blocks. You know, at some point, I always wonder, uh, does an elementary school teacher who teaches math get bored at some point? Like, it's one plus one. I mean, I mean, it's two, right? I mean, because I mean, you're so beyond that, and you're thinking that. But, and the kids are trying to get two? Are you sure? Can it be four sometimes? No. <laughs> no, it's math. It's, it doesn't change. Well, at least old math doesn't. Uh, you know, and, and so, so <laughs> you, there are times uh, that, that, that you could get bored, like, this is just so elementary. But, but here's the deal. You, you, uh, those elementary school teachers are, are building the foundation so that when they get into high school and they're doing calculus and triculus, <laughs> trigonometry, um, whatever, all those big math classes that I didn't take, uh, um, you know, uh, that goes back to they got to know how to do one plus one or they can't do trigonometry, right? I mean, right? They, they've got to learn the basics. You are forming the foundation for their life. So spiritually, right now, their big decision is, do I steal a cookie or not, you know? Um, and you're teaching them about Jesus. You're giving them the basics. Well, Cookie plus stealing is sin. You know, that's, that's bad. You know? yeah, they're, they're learning this. So when they get into high school and adulthood, when we're facing like trigonomic stuff, <laughs> I used to use a different word, shouldn't I? <laughs> Spiritual high math class issues, uh, we're, not trying to, I mean, we're not trying to build a foundation that's not there. You get what I'm saying? You, building the foundation now helps them later. I can know it because I experienced it. When I had a huge temptations in high school and, and college, I was just like, ah, not going there, not going there. Um, uh, why? Because someone blessed me in, in my earlier childhood to tell me, oh, there's consequences for that. <laughs> oh, this is what Jesus asks you to do. I'm like, I just want, I just want to make my God happy. <laughs> you know, haven't been perfect. You know, don't, don't misunderstand me. Uh, but... but <laughs> Most of the time, as, as a, a life goal, I, I was following Jesus. Point is, you are building that foundation for our kids. That's what's going to change uh, our, our world, is, is discipleship within our, our children. Um, you won't have every answer to every question. Um, guess what? Neither do I. And I've been doing this a long time, and studying a long time, and passionately following this book for a long time. I still don't have all the answers. Here's what you do. You teach what you know and let God fill in the rest. Uh, but what if those third graders ask me if worms yawn? Uh, you know, I don't know. We have Google now. You know, we didn't, uh, I don't know. Uh, just, just worry. Just, just teach them what you know. And, 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 and God will fill in, in the blanks. He has a way of knowing about those time, types of things. And, and I know kids, um, I, I've read books that kids can be disrespectful. 
Um, I've heard stories, right? <laughs> they can be troublemakers. Um, sometimes they can be a little stinky. You may have stinky. You ever go to a class and you're like, boy, that's, that stunk. That was stinky. And it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it can happen, right? Uh, they can act like they're not listening. Um, that, was, that was me. I was that kid. I was the stinky kid running around the church slamming doors, causing problems, stealing things, even at church, uh, uh, before Jesus. Um, teach him anyway. Teach him anyway. How's that going to change? Jesus. At some point, they'll get it and go, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't steal that from the church. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't talk like that. Maybe I shouldn't treat people that way. Maybe, you know, it, it, all, it all changes through your teeth. So, so just teach, teach them. Anyway, uh, look at the long game. Uh, not like, well, the, I've said the same thing three weeks. They haven't got it. Well, of course they haven't. It's got to soak in for some kids like me who are a little more stubborn. Um, just keep teaching them. And, and I just, again, I just want to say thank you. I, I thank everybody who's ever changed a diaper. Uh, you think, oh, it's just, change. it's just a nursery. It's just for an hour in the nursery. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope that when you're in there, you're not just uh, babysitting. But you're, uh, what did Jesus do? He took the infants and he, and he held them and he prayed for them. When you change a diaper in the nursery, or playing a toy, uh, whatever it is you're doing, pray for those kids. Wow. You get to bless a little infant. I, I won't think about that unless I'm holding them. And, and so I hope that when you're in there, I know a lot of people uh, go in and out of that, that ministry. Uh, I hope that you're using that as a ministry, as a way of blessing, and not, not just uh, putting in an hour of service, uh, but, but bless, bless the, the kids. Um, let me, and I want to throw out this warning because Jesus does. This is pretty, this, this, this big. In Matthew 18, it says at that time the disciples came to, to Jesus and asked, who's the greatest in the kingdom? So the disciples, you know, they're having an adult conversation, adult, uh, I'm the greatest, no, I'm the greatest. So, so they want to know who's the greatest in the kingdom. He called a small child and had him stand among them. Hey, Johnny, come here. No, well, I asked Johnny's walking in. <laughs> it, must, it must have been a <laughs> Freudian. And, and so little Johnny came over and, and, and stood uh, ne- next, next to, to Jesus. Um, it says, truly I tell you, he said, unless you turn and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child, this one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one child like this in my name welcomes me. But whoever, ca- here's the warning, but whoever causes one of these little ones to, who, who believe in me to fall away, it'd be better for him if a heavy millstone or a big old rock or hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Here, here's, here's the warning. This is so, so important uh, for us to understand. Don't you, you dare, okay? don't you dare in word or deed harm any of God's children. Uh, they're all his, by the way. Don't you dare take away the innocence of a child. Um, it sounds like a threat, doesn't it? Uh, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Jesus like just described like the worst possible way to die, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways I've thought about dying. Hey, son, if you're going to kill me, shoot me in the head, but don't drown me, right? I mean, at least I'll go quickly, I would hope, if I get shot. Uh, he's like, we're going to tie a rock around your head. This would be better for you to have a rock, a little honking rock that you can't escape from, tied around your neck, thrown into the sea, which was like the nightmare of, of a first century Jewish person. Um, they, they just, I mean, but it is for me, too. I, you know, when you're a kid, you think about, how, how are you going to die? The worst possible case scenario I, I ever come up with is drowning. I don't want to do that. It sounds awful. And Jesus is like, yeah, you're going to wish you were drowning. Uh, if you mess with my kids. Um, maybe we need to remind people that <laughs> once, once, once in a while. If you teach them that evil is good or that good is evil, uh, we're there. Someone's taught kids that. <laughs> uh, God have mercy on you. Uh, be careful. Whether you're a teacher uh, or a friend, or a politician, or a part of the in- uh, entertainment industry, uh, or a teacher, or a preacher in a church that has strayed from, from doctrine, uh, Jesus says, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm watching this. I'm watching this. I'm watching what you do to the kids. Um, I'm watching closely. Um, it, 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 is, it is a threat. 
Uh, the efforts by some to destroy this generation of children are, are working. Um, I mean, there is uh, an unprecedented amount of confusion in kids these days. They're confused about their gender and their sexuality, and they're confused about issues of morality. They're confused about uh, salvation. Do you even need salvation? Do you even need Jesus? I mean, can't we just do something else? I mean, does it even matter? Can we, aren't we all just a happy one, big happy group? I mean, it's, it's all part of... Uh, taking away the blessing from this, this generation. It's a host of other things that they're just confused about. Uh, the foundation has been removed from their lives. What's that gonna do in 20 years? You're worried about now? I'm worried about 20 years from now. Uh, hopefully I'll be dead and I won't have to worry about it. Well, I'm so young enough, I won't be. Uh, bummer, <laughs> more bacon for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we're the, it's just it's, heed the warning, I confused myself there. <laughs> <laughs> heed, the, heed the warning. They will be dealt with God in, in the strictest way. One more thing, one more thing. We'll wrap this up. I mean, this is actually a bonus. I'm, I'm already going a little bit long, I know, but it's, it's for kids. It's for the children. Um, I'm going to touch on this. I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, in, in the verse we just read, Jesus, what does Jesus say there? Uh, Unless you turn and become like a little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. That seems like a big statement to me. Yeah, but I said this prayer. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, unless you turn, become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. What in the world is he talking about? Now, now, what we have a, a tendency to do, we have to be careful here, because I've done this through the years, I've read this verse, like, yeah, yeah, I come to mind, what's the perfect child? So I have my definition of what a good child looks like. The problem is, you do too. And it might be different than mine. I would think what Jesus' instructions are, are here are more clear than, hey, whatever you think is the best child, act like that. Uh, be, because you have to, you know, it's, it's the perfect child, one who sits quietly and plays with their toys alone, very, you know, subdued in the corner. Or is the perfect child one who's active and loud and throws their toys across the room? Some of us are going to say yes to both of those. <laughs> so which one's right? I mean, well, there isn't one right. It's the perfect child, one who stays clean and never swears or never wears out their knees and their pants and whatever. And, and, or is it the one who rolls around in the bed and comes in dirty head to toe every night? Well, they're both sound. I mean, <laughs> you know. Uh, so be careful that you don't define what Jesus is, is saying here. Uh, we'll have different answers to what a perfect child is. So, so I doubt that's what he's talking about. If we look at the context uh, where Jesus said this, he's talking to his disciples He's having a teaching time. There's a bunch of people there, and he calls little Johnny over, or whoever the guy was, the, the child, and the child comes, and he says, I'll be like this child. Well, what's the context? What, what just happened? What if the answer is, is, is really that simple? What if Jesus is saying, hey, when I ask you to do something, just do it. Hey, little Johnny, come here. Okay. There wasn't a moment of, I, I pretend like you can't hear. You know how kids are like, oh, I can't hear a single thing. Do your math homework. Supper. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, just, that's how it is. Uh, that didn't happen with little Johnny. Um, uh, little Johnny didn't say, no. You know, hey, Jesus, okay, come here, come here. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't fight it. Uh, he, just, he just came over. And stood, and stood by Jesus, and Jesus used him for, for an, an, an example. He didn't come out he, with no questions, no debate, no like, well, what am I doing? I have to know first. You've got to tell me more before I decide. The Messiah said, come, and he came. It, it, was, that, it was that simple. Now, you think about it, Matthew got that. Matthew was a tax collector living the wild life, the rock star type of lifestyle. He's there bringing in the dollars at the tax booth one day, and Jesus walks by. They've had some interaction already, but now he, then he walks by and says, hey, Matthew, come and follow me. What did Matthew do? All right. And he left. Radically changed his life that day. He became like a little child, that little child that Jesus called over. Come and follow me. Okay, I'm in. Uh, James, John. Uh, James and Andrew, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, Peter and Andrew, that's what I'm, I'm mixing myself up. The, the brothers, the fishermen, uh, they're in a boat. And they've had some interaction with Jesus, so it's not like, it's not like he's a stranger, but there they are. They're at work. They're fishing. He walks up, hey, guys, follow me. What do they do? They jump out of the boat. All right, we're in. And they, follow, they, leave, they leave fishing. Now they're disciples of Jesus. I, I think that's what he's getting at. Just, just do what I say. We have this book of blessing right here. It's a big book. There's a lot to learn. That's why I'm a full life student. I'll, stud I'll study this till the day I die, and I keep learning more. Uh, you read the book, and you just, just do it. 
I think that's what you're getting at. I think that's what you're getting at. Uh, don't fight it. Don't, don't, don't look for loopholes. Don't try to explain ways to change the meaning of what it says. Uh, just, just, just do it. That's where the blessings of life come, by understanding the precepts, the commandments, the teachings of God, uh, and following them. And it starts with us passing that on to our children and letting them grow up in it. That gives them a way head start in life. So thank you for what you do for the kids. Um, and what we're going to continue to do. Uh, um, I'm ready to go to the next level <laughs> with this stuff um, in, in serving kids. Um, let's do this. Let's pray. Father. Father.